And so welcome everyone to day four of Suburban Action Week. Um, welcome to the Cook County Bike Plan Update. Um, I'm Maggie Sherwinski. I'm an advocacy manager at the Active Transportation Alliance, and I've got Brian Larson here um, with me. He's a former intern um, and current student at UIC. He's going to be leading the, the Q&A. So if you have any questions for Cook County staff, add those questions to the chat. Add any comments. I have comments a question for Brian, though. Oh, yes? Brian, are, are you a MUP student or are you something else? I am a MUP student. All right, can, uh, class of 94, you're all right. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Um, so um, let me introduce our speakers um, that you just heard from Bennett. Bennett Haller, um, he is a transit manager at Cook County Department of Transportation and Highways. Um, and presenting with him is Beth Davis, a, a planner also from Cook County Department of Transportation and Highways and Tomo Music. A transportation planner, um, also from Cook County, um, is here, um, and we'll be hearing again from Cook County tomorrow about their transit plan. So, um, encourage you to join both sessions because um, these are really important plans that are happening um, for the county. But with that, I will turn it over to um, Beth and Bennett to get started. Thank you. I think Bennett has the presentation. You are going to Vanna, is it up? <laughs> Aha. Okay, great. So this is kind of intended to be an abbreviated version of our open house, uh, just like a brief introduction to what we're trying to do with the Cook County bike plan. Um, some of you may have already seen the full presentation and if you haven't, it is on uh, the bike plan project website, which we will give you the information for at the end of the um, talk. Um, so next slide, we'll just kind of give a brief overview of the bike plan, um, including an introduction to how this fits into all of the county's re recent initiatives um, and our LRTP, our Long Ranch Transportation Plan, um, and how it fits in uh, to that and the foundational principles of the bike plan. Um, it's kind of a general, well, actually, I don't think we're going to go over community outreach, but, you know, uh, opportunities for engagement um, and then any time for questions if you have any. Um, so most people are probably familiar with these and sick of us talking about them by now. Um, these are our long range transportation goals. Um, we have, Cook County has engaged in a number of initiatives recently, um, kind of trying to achieve these goals. We've got Invest in Cook, which has really increased investment um, in projects throughout the region. We also have engaged in the Cook County Freight Plan. And then this in partnership with the uh, also currently ongoing Cook County Transit Plan are intended to address that first principle there, which is um, uh, prioritizing transit and other transportation alternatives. Next, and Bennett. Is this Bennett, are you, you are muted. We have this program invest there. in Cook, which starting in 2017, thank you, Beth, uh, was uh, an $8.5 million grant program. And um, it's been used to fund studies for roadways and transit and freight. But I think one of the principal impacts is that it's often been used to actually build bike and pedestrian infrastructure. So side paths, for example, or uh, bike lane improvements or ADA ramps and things of that nature. Uh, and also we do reach out in particular to higher need communities, uh, cohort three and four, for those of you who are familiar with CMAP uh, community rankings, uh, that, that we give more money to them uh, to the tune of nearly $7 million out of the $11 million we spent in the first four years of the program. And we anticipate we will spend it at a similar rate uh, every year going forward at least. Uh, so one of the key elements of our bike plan are really three principles. Uh, number one of which is really to think about um, expanding the overall off street and trail network uh, really as a low stress system throughout the county, really finding ways to get you out of neighborhoods in Chicago to connect to something that gives you lower stress crossings of major streets and ultimately connects into the larger trail network particularly that of the Cook County Forest Reserve, largely just outside the city of Chicago. Uh, it is also a priority of our plan to make sure we invest equitably. And by that, it, 
uh, we mean actually disproportionately in communities of color uh, and lower income communities, which uh, exist uh, primarily in the south and western parts of our county, and to make sure that we have a, a, a network that really serves the needs of, of those communities. Uh, and then lastly, we want to just generally talk about how we support purposeful trips. And uh, really, we want your help here, because uh, I, I think the question is, what can the county do uh, I mean, sort of uh, like beyond bike lanes, like what's the issue about why it is you might not bike to the grocery stores frequently or bike to a park or school or for work? Uh, you know, how can we support just those everyday commutes better? Um, so uh, as to the first goal, I think it's an important principle, and this is really building on some of the research of Roger Geller up in Oregon, uh, that you know, different people in the adult population and really down to about the age of eight um, are comfortable in biking in certain areas, uh, but much less so in others. And ultimately, biking on major arterial streets is very stressful. And I would say for maybe 1% of the adult population, they can manage that stress and they will do it uh, maybe up to 5%. Of, of residents might do it. But really when you start to get to less stressful situations, you know, separated, buffered bike lanes, and then finally uh, bike facilities that are entirely separate from the road network, either side paths or off street trails, those are the least stressful and likely appeal to the broadest range of residents. Uh, so with that in mind, and we think about the population of Cook County, which is a little over 5.2 million as of 2020, um, if we take out, uh, children under uh, eight and we take out seniors over 80 and we take out the 30% or so of those people who don't bike at all, maybe we have a total population of 2.8 million people in the county who bike at least a certain number of times uh, any given year. Um, but understanding that if you think about the infrastructure, road infrastructure in particular, that major arterials maybe appeal to a quarter of a million residents of the county, a major and minor arterials might appeal to half a million people. But if you're trying to get to sort of a, a good chunk of county residents, you're really talking about um, uh, bike uh, um, facilities that are away from the higher stress streets, retail streets and major arterials with lots of traffic, but minor collectors, residential streets, and then ultimately off street where, uh, you know, I think the greatest majority of people are comfortable, not just the people who are comfortable biking on major streets, but really a large part of the population uh, might then uh, use those facilities. So one thing we've done recently is really to map the entire off street trail network and explicitly looking at paved off street trails in the forest preserve, uh, in MW WRT rights of way, the Lakefront Trail, for example, in Chicago, things like the 606, the Illinois Prairie Path, Cal Sag, and other trails like that, um, and side paths that particularly are in uh, higher um, income communities like Hoffman Estates and Schomburg, uh, just to document where those are, and just objectively, where are side paths, where are these off street trails, and to map them, uh, because this really hasn't been done accurately to date in the county or in the region. So um, that's what we're doing here. and. Uh, Right now, we estimate there's about 426 miles of existing trails, 350 uh, miles in off street trails, uh, 65 miles in side paths, five miles in greenways. And here I'm, I'm looking very narrowly just at, say, the uh, road in the botanic gardens that connects, uh, say, to uh, the trail system of the Forest Preserve and ultimately up to Lake Hook Road, for instance, or parts of the Cal Sag or Major Taylor, where it's, uh, there's access to the Major Taylor Trail from uh, Halstead and 134th, for instance, on a, a, a Forest Preserve Road. So I'm counting those. So greenways here are really private roads. So there are cars, but, but it's, it's not really a, a public street. Uh, and then also documenting all the road crossings. In that 426 miles, there are 382 road crossings, individual road crossings. And those are often moments of very high stress. And if you look at ownership, about 150 miles are owned by the Forest Preserve, but notice that no one entity owns more than half. Um, and for example, uh, organizations like the MWRD have about 40 miles of trails, but they don't manage those trails. They're largely managed either by the Chicago Park District, like the North Shore Channel Trail, or by the Forest Preserve, like the Centennial Trail uh, along the um, Sanitary and Ship Canal. Uh, but then you notice a lot of organizations own just little bits and pieces. So uh, we're also just documenting where uh, future trails are planned. And one thing I want to emphasize here is that 
Cook County themselves are going to build about 20 miles, uh, our department of, of new trails, uh, such as completing the Burnham Greenway uh, in the uh, south uh, southeast part of Chicago, um, and side paths uh, along Plainfield Road uh, and along Pulaski Road uh, and, and improvements to the Skokie Valley Trail. So we're becoming a major owner of trails. And I think the question then becomes looking at both the existing trails and sections that we know are going to be built, um, how can we sort of extend that to also become more of a low stress network throughout the county. Um, so, you know, crucially here, uh, you know, we're, we're documenting the existing trail network. Uh, we're looking for ways to expand the trail network on our own rights of way, you know, get our own house in order. Uh, we're looking ways to fund uh, new trail projects and particularly uh, I want to emphasize, you know, how do you get into a city like Chicago? Uh, you know, we need to develop a strategy uh, along the lines of some of the things Chicago is already doing, like on uh, Roscoe or uh, other uh, greenways within the city or Leland. Uh, but I would say also that I I think the historic boulevard system is a really great place to start if we're thinking about how we might connect uh, that system uh, into uh, the off street system and create an overall low stress, net stress network. Beth. Great. Okay, so um, that was all our first principle. Our second principle is ensuring equitable, equitable investments. Um, so <laughs> the bike po advocacy population is a very engaged one and we love that. We get very valuable insights and input put into our bike planning processes, but we know there are more people um, biking in Cook County than those that we usually hear from. So this goal really speaks to that um, looking to get input from additional voices throughout Cook County. Um, so this slide is really showing um, the, the demographic breakdown of Cook County by race, uh, demonstrating a mostly non-white or non-white and non-Hispanic population in Cook County. Um, we know that there are more people biking or interested in biking than those we usually see engaged. Um, and these are the folks that are probably in that interested and concerned category that uh, Bennett was talking about earlier, and those are the folks that we intend to make an extra effort to engage through the bike plan. Um, so we've also identified several demographic categories of people who we'd like to engage. Generally, those are shown here. Um, we've got race, ethnicity, uh, income, uh, and distribution of children and seniors. Um, so to the extent possible, uh, we have linked some of these to um, geography, as you might be familiar with. Um, so we want to analyze the geographic distribution of these categories. There are also a variety of factors that aren't correlated with geography. They're not as readily accessible to quantify based on the data that we have, um, though we have looked at them. These are things like um, biking ability, age and adult population and gender. Um, and we have looked into those a little bit, but they're just um, less easy to tie to geography. <clears throat> but along the race lines about 72% of Asian Americans live within a half, half mile of a trail, while less than 50% of Black residents and less than 45% of Latinx residents live within a mile of a trail. Um, as far as income and age, uh, less than 60% of adults live within a mile and a half of a trail, and Cook County residents under the age of 18 typically have less access to trails uh, than those over the age of 18. And... Let's see. So these are our um, our goals for for the bike plan or for this particular um, goal of our plan. Oops, I lost my page. Um, oops. Uh, so we're we're planning on uh, documenting bike access and trails by race, race and ethnicity, noting that um, it's one thing to be within a mile and a half of a trail as the crow flies, and another thing to have an access point to those trails. So we're actually working on a tool that will help us look at um, bike investments in terms of the number of people who have more access and the demographics of those people. So who has more access and uh, how? And to the second point here then, we'll prioritize those projects that improve access for communities of color and low-income communities that come out of that analysis. And we also plan to be really intentional intentional about our outreach efforts to groups that are typically underrepresented in the bike planning process, hosting interest group meetings in order to address uh, concerns with biking and bike infrastructure in particular groups. So our third principle is a support for lifestyle cycling. And 
what we mean when we say lifestyle cycling is the use of a uh, bike for a purposeful bike, bike trip, like commuting trips to the grocery store or other trips that uh, use biking as a mode of transportation. And I actually just saw a good question, a relevant question to this topic pop up in the chat. Um, so this map comes from CDOT Streets for Cycling Plan 2020, which was done before 2020. Um, what's noticeable about this map is the way that the streets uh, that are proposed for cycling here are closely related to the commuting pattern of cars. And that commuting pattern is very defined by direct patterns of infrastructure. Um, and our focus here under this goal would really be reducing the conflicts between modes of transportation, which is something that Cook County has worked on through the freight plan and studied extensively in our other outreach efforts. Um, making sure that each mode is prioritized individually by identifying the appropriate places um, for bikes through this plan that would give them that priority. Um, so in identifying those corridors, it's important to keep in mind the distance a typical person will commute via bicycle. So bikes are already a relatively small percentage of commuters, um, but then uh, they'll, people bike commute generally one and a half to four miles. Um, and then we see a big drop, drop off around six miles. So um, that gives us an idea of how frequently we need access to trails, like a trail access point or, or other low stress infrastructure um, when we're talking about using bikes as a mode of transportation. All right, so um, there are a few things that we can do and will do in order to promote this kind of lifestyle of cycling, including uh, biking as one part of the longer transit trip is one of them. Um, we're also working on establishing a countywide bike counting program to establish kind of a baseline for us about how many people are biking and where they're doing it, which will eventually help us where, understand where we could make investments and really have an impact with those investments. And we also have an opportunity to develop partnerships with municipalities and organizations to direct some of our resources and investments um, to developing our bike infrastructure in a way that's more inclusive of all residents. And finally, we want to work with po policymakers and businesses on creating incentives for those people who bike and making it easier for them to do so. For example, um, so in Cook County, we have our transit benefits, which makes lowers the cost of using transit to get to work a little bit. So what kind of incentives can we provide to people who are biking along those lines um, to incentivize biking? Um, that also speaks to kind of um, last or end of trip facilities like showers and bike racks. Um, so maybe, you know, we have a bike rack program or something. Um, so this is just a word on our engagement and outreach strategy. Um, we've kind of developed a outreach strategy that uh, we think will get us the feedback we need. We have what we're calling um, ongoing virtual and digital engagement that's like on demand. Uh, we have a project website I mentioned earlier where we have uh, the our previous open house presentation. We have the opportunity to take surveys. We have a map up there where you can map, uh, you know, where you like to bike or where you want to bike or problem areas. Um, we'll also plan on having um, another, a few more open house meetings and more scheduled engagement. Um, we have also our interest group meetings that will allow us to get a little bit deeper into a particular subject that we'll schedule. And then we also have our technical advisory committee that meets uh, bi-monthly uh, in order to uh, <clears throat> talk about the more technical aspects of the bike plan and how we can kind of really partner with those or, uh, organizations and partners. And as I mentioned, this is our, we'll have, this is our timeline for community outreach. So we'll have a few more open house meetings. Um, and we'll, we're also on planning on having a few surveys throughout this process that will be available on the website. Um, there, there will be three of them. The first one is already up there. So you should go take it and send it to all of your friends. And then by the beginning or, you know, around springtime of 2022, we plan on having our final bike plan. And these are our project outcomes. Ultimately, we're really hoping to get an increase in bike ridership. We want to enhance the low stress bike network, network and solve gaps in the one that already exists. And we want to be mindful and thoughtful about who we're engaging and engaging with those residents of Cook County that we don't usually hear from through these processes. So um, these are some next, next steps. The, <laughs> this is a little dated. The community engagement webpage is already launched and I will get that link for you. And then um, our survey is also launched. It's kind of focusing on COVID and how COVID has affect, uh, affected bicycling patterns. And then our second open house meeting is in June of 2021. And if you are interested in attending that, 
please send us an email at that this address here. Well, there's the there's the um, website as well. Um, bike plan at cookcounty.il or cookcountyil.gov is our um, project email as well. So you can email our team there. And now I think it is comment time. Well, great. Thank you for that presentation. Yeah, we have you know several comments and questions. Uh, I'll go through actually the comments first that it sound that are predominantly responsive. It sounds like to uh, that question you were asking of what can the county do to uh, beyond bike lanes, like what can reduce barriers to usage. So one of the first comments we had from Terry is that wayfinding and racks are important for uh, bicycle usage. Um, and yeah, can I comment on that too? Um, yes. I, I agree that that's, I mean, I think it's a very interesting issue about uh, as just a, a regular trail user myself is that oftentimes you cross the street and, you, and there's no sign to tell you what the street is. And just like, you know, I don't always want to stop and look at my phone every freaking time I need to know where I am. Like I, it'd be good to know what street that was, right? And then also that just goes to the basic issue that sometimes the off street trail system, even though it can be used to get from one place to another for a purposeful reason, it often fails simply because, you know, very basic wayfinding that you would expect on a, on a, on a road anywhere else, those signs exist. So yeah, it's a really great point. Yeah. And another comment about also usage, uh, workplaces needing secure parking inside during the work day uh, for bicycle storage. Um, that was kind well. of part of that end, end of trip facility uh, conversation that we talked about a little bit. And then we have from Dave, uh, changing the forest preserves uh, policy that closes trails in the preserves from dusk to dawn, perhaps allowing them for more, uh, sounds like uh, transportation usage. Yes, and, and that and that comes up on a. We've heard that on on many occasions already. Yeah, and that's definitely. I, I think particularly for the stronger and more confident cyclists, that 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 definitely becomes an issue. And, and I know particularly like October, November. That's that's sort of where that's most of a challenge because it's still not cold, but yet it's dark. Okay. Um, so we have a, we have at least one question asking for a copy of the presentation. If that's possible to uh, release that, we could send it out via the email. Is that something? Yeah, uh, we can do that. It's also available on that project website there. If you go to the overview tab, it is in the second, or there there is a download at the bottom. Great. And uh, so Everhart asks, uh, how are you working with neighboring counties to tie your facilities together uh, and they say, especially uh, McHenry County? Um, well, frankly, uh, I, I do have to rank the counties in terms of how important their access is to Cook County. And uh, probably number one and two, and it's fairly close, would actually be Lake County, Indiana, because we have a very long border with them, uh, you know, south of uh, Chicago. Um, and well, and Chicago Hammond border too, where the lakefront trails should connect and should be better than they currently are. Um, so uh, Lake County, Indiana, DuPage County, uh, Illinois are probably one and two. Uh, Lake County, actually we, we're doing pretty well already because we have a lot of connections and we're actually building uh, a, a, the Skokie Valley Trail to connect over Lake Cook Road into the existing Lake County system. Um, but I, I hope you see my, sh my short answer is uh, we are keenly aware of the need to connect uh, and part particularly Sydney Canyon at DuPage County is someone we work with very closely. Mitch Bayarga uh, over in NERPC is someone we work with very closely uh, because uh, we are particularly concerned. And I would say to date, we've interacted with McHenry County less than those two. But um, ultimately, uh, that is uh, one, one thing I want to emphasize about the trail network is we love people in Cook County biking onto other people's trails and wearing them out. So yes, we want to connect to McHenry County. Uh, so it looks like Gio is asking uh, what the pie chart on page 21 of the presentation was speaking to. It looked like it was just uh, the one regarding uh, ethni uh, ethnicity of users and maybe engagement, sound, I believe. Yeah, so we were really saying that um, most residents in Cook County are non-white or Hispanic, um, just trying to speak to 
the people who live in Cook County and the demographic of folks that we're really interested in engaging with. Yeah, or, or uh, you know, also to put it another way that Cook County is a majority minority county already. Um, and if you just sort of ask Google, what percentage white is Cook County? The answer will come back like 54%. But what that's actually doing is including white Latinos and white Anglos together as one group, right? But if you're thinking about ethnicity and race, the, you know, uh, the white non-Hispanic, white non-Latino is uh, a minority in the county. And to be clear, also, we're interested in engaging with everyone, but particularly those people who we haven't seen uh, or heard from during these processes before. Very important to make sure that uh, the process include is representative of everybody's needs. Yes. And, um, is there, uh, so Stephen is wondering if there's any assistance that the county provides for local groups trying to install crossing lights, for example, on IDOT routes. Invest in good. There's my plug. Our, our Invest in Cook uh, application for 2021 is currently open, closing, I believe it's March. March 12th. March 12th. But yes, that's uh, so, you know, that program is open to uh, a variety of different agencies uh, and particularly um, through your uh, community. That's a, a, a one of the ways you can do it or active trans, for example, can uh, assist in applications. So the, the, I, I don't want to speak for anything that, um, you know, I don't want to get them more workload, but. Uh, no. <laughs> um, I'm also going to have to leave with apologies. So I'm passing the baton of question answering to Tomo. <laughs> it was good to talk to y'all and I hope I'll see you soon. Thanks, Beth. Thanks, Beth. Bye. Beth. So Joy was asking, uh, how much are you able to drill down your race and ethnicity data? Are you segmenting by zip code, even further by zip plus four? Speaking as a data analyst, I you know I know that zip codes are not the best use of uh, analysis as well, given that they are meant for the post office is getting mail around versus actually what a census block involves. But yeah, how refined of information are you actually able to I get believe in terms uh, of investment? So I believe the short answer is census block group. Zip codes are too crude for us. Mm -hmm. We're going to a much a finer mm -hmm. level of analysis. And uh, as a crucial point that Beth made, and uh, we have uh, actually not not here, but we uh, within our SPP team, there is this man, Peter Dirks, who's working specifically on this access tool we mentioned earlier. Um, so um, it's all fine and good, as we said before, to talk about crow flies distances to trails, but particularly um, in like the south and west sides of Chicago and the suburbs, often uh, the barrier between you and a trail is something like a railroad embankment or an interstate and you can't get across it. So the actual distance a bike rides might be multiple times the distance the crow flies, right? So uh, trying to address uh, obstacles and, and getting very fine grained because ultimately, I mean, if you're going to have an equity policy, uh, you need to say, you know, and I, I as you, I think you saw, I think just going with uh, categories of Asian, uh, you know, non-white Latino, white Latino, um, black, uh, and other, uh, you can actually quite uh, clearly document, you know, where the disparities are now, particularly with Latino uh, and, and Black populations uh, in both the uh, Cook County and Chicago specifically um, that don't have access to trails. So I, it, I think it gives us a very clear metric. And the other thing I want to say about this that's important to us is it's often very difficult to say what the impact will be if you provide a trail because, you know, no one uses it right now. So, you know, what are, what's your baseline and what would the increase be? But uh, our issue is we want to make sure that households have access to a system. And that's something we can measure and measure very accurately. Okay, a uh, question from Alan. Uh, they are wondering about if you have any updates on the status of the Skokie Valley Trail. Uh, apparently yesterday, the Lake County DOT official said a bridge is being built over Lake Cook Road. Is that going to happen this year? Uh, and also any plans to extend the trail south from where it ends at Bryn Mawr? The trail. Uh, I, I, no, I assume, see, I, I, I'm enough of a local war that I assume you mean the Saganash Trail uh, at Bryn Mawr and the Weber Spur and all that. Um, that area. I mean, 
Uh, yes, uh, we certainly want that to come in. I, I do want to say I hope you notice in, in what we showed in terms of future trails. Um, we can't bank on that one yet. Is that still a UP owned facility and there's still ongoing negotiations? Apparently we need to make a master deal with them. Um, but uh, absolutely, I think that the core uh, principle I would say that we're, we're operating under is we want to push off street trails as far into Chicago as we possibly can. And the Weber Spur is definitely one of those things of that nature. Uh, and I would also say uh, as another issue I really love to tackle is what does happen at the South Lake front north of Calumet Park before uh, to get to USX? Cause that's just a nightmare. It doesn't meet any low stress criteria and it never will where it is right now. Is there, I mean, can we add some like clean fill? Maybe it'll, you know, further east and somehow actually make a lakefront connection because I mean, there is no low stress way to do it right now. Yeah, I, I was just gonna add the, I, the bridge is a go, the bridge over Lake Cook Road, uh, that will happen. That's, that's in our, our plan we have programmed. Um, I don't know if it'll happen this year. I don't know where they are exactly, but um, that is coming down the pipeline. Yes, thank you so much. And just to be clear, that'll be from Dundee all the way um, to Lake Hook Road and then over Lake Hook Road connecting mm -hmm. the system in Lake County. Thanks for bringing us back to reality. It's, I'm not <laughs> sure, I don't want to, you know, construction is construction. I don't want to overpromise, but yeah. sometime before 2024 for sure, but you know, construction, but, uh, but you know, we, we, it will happen and soon in a construction kind of way. Okay, uh, I guess similar on routes, uh, we have a question about uh, regarding the map of off street routes and has anyone mapped the quote unquote cow trails that should be bike lanes? Obviously desire paths that are out there and being utilized by, by people, but might not be official. Are they yet on your radar about uh, what's out there for potential? So, I mean, opportunities, uh, I mean, I, I think it's important to recognize cow paths that might happen versus ones where there are sort of uh, just challenges, particularly related to ownership that I think are pretty beyond the pale. And I would also say uh, we are a transportation department. And one thing I wanna make a really big plea for is water-based delivery of aggregate and asphalt mm -hmm. and sugar and oil-based products. I want all that stuff to be delivered by water. I do not want a bike trail to interfere with the delivery of aggregate to Ozinga, for instance, because that's bad because then I get more trucks to deal with that will kill cyclists, okay? So uh, I want to make a plea for the fact that Weco County are a multi, you know, transit mode supporter, transportation mode supporter and rail and water based transport is a locational advantage of our city. And, uh, you know, I want to avoid conflicts with cyclists by not having cyclists in the way. I was just going to add that like Peter Dirks in our department has done quite a bit of work, uh, like Google Earth, Google Maps kind of work looking at the existing trails, looking at where potential connections are. And I think he's, he's looking at real ways to connect those things. Um, we're not like looking at every single cow trail and going to map that, I don't think. Um, but I think the way that we'll capture some of that and some of like people's preferred routes is probably through our surveying and public outreach and being able to actually ask, hey, which way are you going? Uh, which ways do you prefer? Uh, and that, that'll help us kind of prioritize which are the most kind of important connections, uh, which ones we should kind of de dedicate our engineering and planning uh, staff and resources to uh, so that we kind of end up with a discrete and kind of meaningful list of projects that we can implement at the end of the day. Yeah, and I, I do wanna add it. So that was, I was on the negative side. On the positive side, where are trails? They're in forest preserves, they're in utility corridors, common utility corridors, and they're on NWRD property. And they increasingly are on Cook County property. And um, we see opportunities in all of those locations, the forest preserve in particular, are along many stretches of the Des Plaines River, unfortunately not all of them. And we will, look, and we will work actually with active transit to try to see if we can address uh, that gap because that seems to be a really logical place for a good north-south connection, right? Um, and then um, 
also uh, utility corridors. I mean, uh, again, uh, we will show you some images of this, uh, but there's a really great utility corridor that potentially could connect North Branch Trail to this Plains River Trail, you know, um, you know, north of Chicago. And I think that's one of the interesting things about specifically think about the trail network is I think one reason it hasn't been a major focus in the region is because it's just outside, but not within the city of Chicago, outside the Lakefront Trail and things like the Major Taylor, right? But, um, but just outside of Chicago, I mean, like Skokie and Lakewood, they've been amazing. I mean, you wouldn't believe it, but they've got like miles of trail and they're, and they're building more. And so I just wanna make sure Chicagoans can get to those trails. Got a question from Ralph wondering if you make any use of the Strava di uh, data for our bike users in your decision making. Um, this, so um, I, I have a love hate relationship with Strava, just to throw it out there. I mean, I think it's really good because, uh, you know, I, I used it when it was free, I used it more, uh, but I certainly know how I used it and I didn't use it to record every trip. It's like, I'm going to go on a century or something. Oh, I'm going to go explore the Displains River, even though it's a hot, muggy day, I'm going to get attacked by mosquitoes. But uh, <laughs> I wouldn't use it for regular trips. And now it's a subscriber service, a subscription service. So I'm now more skeptical about what it means uh, in terms of what it shows. And even looking at some of the Strava Metro stuff I've seen, it definitely skews toward the more recreational cyclist trying to do, you know, Peloton. Uh, versus um, the person going to the grocery store. But on the other hand, that's, I mean, it does, I think for low stress, it actually is a fairly useful tool because that it is showing often that they're trying to avoid cars. So they're, you know, what, what East, West, North, South Street, particularly in places like Chicago or Cicero or Berwyn that have the, you know, the full grid, they're not on the division or Chicago Avenue, they're on Augusta, right? And it does show you those sorts of things. Um, question for you guys about invest in Cook, because I know I just hear from a lot of municipalities around Cook County how how important that funding source is to them for getting projects to actually happen, especially related to walking and biking. And I think it's a really interesting funding model that Cook County has that I think other counties should be thinking about. And I could you could you explain a little bit about um, how invest in Cook funds itself and how, how you're able to provide $8 million in funding for transportation projects every year. Um, mm -hmm. And just a, just a little bit more background about it. Yeah, I like, um, I, I, I guess historically it was just kind of thought of as an implementation arm of our long range transportation plan. I, I think like absent of, you know, having clear policy priorities that emphasized all these uh, uh, different kind of transportation priorities that we hadn't traditionally concentrated on. We didn't, uh, we didn't look beyond county roadways uh, from curb to curb. Um, and our, our long range transportation plan kind of outlined uh, policies for us that said, hey, no, you've got to be more expansive if you want to look at this as a network, uh, if you want to improve things for everyone in the county. Uh, so like given that, I mean, it was an easier sell to say, hey, uh, leadership at DOTH, uh, leadership at the county, Cook County Board, uh, we want to make a specific carve out to eight and a half million dollars available transportation uh, projects related to, to things on local roadways or transit uh, providers uh, that advance our, our, our priorities. And um, I think we've gotten really good buy-in, you know, I mean, like, uh, for for Cook County commissioners, it's they, they don't necessarily see the roadways as just our like doth controlled things. Uh, they respond to constituents who who complain about all the roadways within their district, and this is a way that we can provide kind of improvements uh, through throughout the county on multiple types of of infrastructure, whether it be these kind of bike trails or uh, kind of transit facilities that we don't necessarily have control of. Um, another thing that we do in our uh, assistant superintendent talks a lot about is it, it, it tends to create a, a pipeline of projects. Uh, one, well, one, it gives us a kind of global view of what, what's important to all the communities in the county. And two, we can kind of establish a pipeline of projects that, that go from like the very beginning 
getting them ready for other grant funds, uh, getting them ready for kind of advanced engineering and construction as well, and, and giving them the opportunity to get started and maybe kind of unstucking a handful of projects that, that don't or have, have trouble uh, advancing. Uh, whether it be because they, they have struggle with match and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know, I, I think a combination of those things uh, made it a very good sell, an easy sell to uh, the, the, the folks who are kind of our elected officials and our, our higher management. And I mean, we, we saw it as a priority that we needed to kind of set this money aside if we wanted to make things better more generally. Uh, across the county and actually kind of meaningfully advance our, our priorities. Yeah, and I, and I think as I said in the presentation, bike and pad projects, you know, they, you can have to have a fairly big impact and, and build stuff, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But you can't with a freight project, you know, a grade separation or something, you know. That ain't, that ain't, that's not an $8.5 million project, but you know, <laughs> corner improvements, bike lanes, you can fund a lot with 100,000 $200,000. And as she said, ap the application's open until March 12th. Is March that right? 12th, yeah, yeah. That's the deadline. So, anyone on this call, let your municipal staff know that that funding <laughs> opportunity is out, out there right now. And uh, wow, it works. What's it good for? Like, you like I like that it's startup and getting ready for things, just lints for trails and and that kind of thing, or is it for? So uh, yeah. one little secret we haven't uh, said, and I, I've been surprised that Tom has been sort of part to understand is that we are funded primarily through motor fuel tax. So essentially what we need, I don't want to sound like a lawyer, but a rational nexus to transportation. But that can be, of course, bike improvements, pedestrian improvements, transit improvements, those are all transportation or freight improvements, although I'm sure you guys are less interested in that right now. So I'm not, wasn't really gonna sell you on freight improvements, but um, mm -hmm. uh, but it, yeah, primarily for improvements in public uh, assets like rights of way, is, it's where it's been used or for uh, development of trails with you know a willing property owner, ComEd or Forest Preserve, MWRD, what have you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and it, it can be any phase uh, of the project that supports the kind of transportation need. So and this like low stress network map you guys have, have you tried to figure out which segments you want to connect first or, or next or well, like you know, how again, much money it's going to cost or anything like that? Well, so I mean, it, part of it is we, we can't build it all out yet because we don't we don't know where it's going to go. But if I had to prioritize a few if 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 we care about equity and care about serving uh, communities of color, uh, things like the Inglewood line in Chicago matter to us. And particularly more than four along, four mile long little village hills in Paseo matters a hell of a lot to us uh, because that, uh, that one in, in itself, the, the Paseo would serve um, by our reckoning about 150,000 folks, mostly Latinos. And so that would actually increase the number of Latinos with access to trails in the county by 10%, mm -hmm. from like less than half to more than half. So I like that project by equity That's measure. Yeah, I remember that one. That was sort of, um, weren't they worried about gentrification and stuff? Are they still worried about that or? So I, I mean, I think this is a key point uh, as part, part of my justification for talking about it as a network. If, it's, if we put it everywhere, you can't say it's always gentrification, right? Mm -hmm. And or also, maybe, yeah, everybody benefits if it's everywhere, you know, yeah, the whole world. Right. Hmm. Right. And then as far as this, um, I don't want to make a big deal out of it, but if I lived really close to a forest reserve trail and I wanted to use it in the evenings or I can't imagine unless I was working like at a school that I would be using it at night, but is it a big deal or is it like a safety issue? Because Lake County was talking about it as it's like a safety issue and they're like, is it, and I was thinking then in regards to this potential problem, which I don't really know exists yet, what about the counting? Do, could you guys count the number of people who are like using it at night that maybe it's not a problem? I don't know. Well, so I have to say, as I get older, I do understand the problem a little better because my ability to see at night has gotten like considerably worse. And even with like, I mean, I don't care what technology it is, uh, those new LED ones, it doesn't matter. I can't see beyond the cone of light 
and in, in a completely dark area, I'm I'm screwed e either way. And actually, it's better with the light off, and it, and it's and it's still incredibly dangerous, particularly in the forest preserve where you got those trees overhead, and there and all that ambient light that Chicago signs uh, you know shines up to the sky doesn't benefit me at all. Yeah, so, I wouldn't want to um, be out there, I guess, you know, it exactly. sounds like it's scary. So, you know, I don't want to be over, don't get overly prescriptive about this, but that is kind of an issue for the more, the strong, if we're really concerned about the interested but concerned crowd, I'm not sure that's their issue because they're not necessarily biking at that hour. But, mm -hmm. I, you know, I think over time, if you look at where the Forest Preserve likes to put trails, like the, there's this new side pass uh, that Skokie built for them in Old Orchard uh, near the North Branch Trail, and that's where they like to have new trails, you know, right next to a, a road, in which case it can be lit by just the street lights that are already there. And that sort of works for, you know, all night infrastructure. And is someone going to arrest you for biking on that section at night? I mean, uh, I mean, again, I, I don't know, but. Yeah, Lake County the other day had a discussion and they were talking about building these wide um things alongside their roads. Uh, what are they called when you get off the road a little bit to the, on the edge? That it's not shoulder. like a shoulder. Yeah. yeah. They're talking about, they had this big side shoulder program that they want to build everywhere, but that's not yeah. for the type of people that we're interested in. Well, so, I mean, I, I, when I say side path, I mean, so I'm talking about, and I, you know, this exists particularly Northwest and Southwest uh, parts of, 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 uh, the county, you know, what I mean specifically is it's a it's a designated multi-use trail. Schomburg has a lot of these, for example, Hoffman Estates, Orland Park, Melrose Park even has one on North Avenue. And it says it's designated for adults to bike on. It's usually two, it's two way and it's usually 10 feet wide, although often less, I'm not denying that. Uh, but, and it's usually, you know, in the space of the sidewalk. So you're not just separated uh, horizontally, you're also somewhat separated vertically from traffic. So that that's what that's what I'm and that's what I'm uh, counting within that trail network map that you saw. I'm not oh. counting something that's in the street, whether it's a buffered bike lane or a painted bike lane. Um, and there's a logic to that on my part, which is that's harder stuff to count. And it's if I if I'm just objectively saying it's a trail or a side path and it meets the standard or it doesn't, then it's easier for me to document. But when you start to get to the squishy stuff, I I, I don't know what to say about. At a certain level, I think for the people we really want to talk to, the intersection of two or three major streets is simply too stressful for them to want to go through regardless. And mm -hmm. I, I love the way Google sometimes throws up its hands, particularly near me, the uh, Cicero, Milwaukee, um, Irving Park intersection. If you turn on bikiness, as I like to call it in Google, uh, in Google Maps, literally the low stress point ends in the very center of the intersection. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, how does that, who drew that? And what is that supposed to mean? I'm okay until I get to the center of the intersection? No, no, I don't want to go through that intersection. No, I, I try to find small intersections away from the big intersections to use. I, I'm always on residential streets in Evergreen Park, Oak Lawn, those kind of places, you know? And as far as this, um, you guys want to make it available for equity reasons to everybody, of course, um, cat, uh, not cats, uh, CMAP has some really good uh, maps of, of where the low income um, ethnicities are that uh, actually probably even do bike. This is a lot of data that says that the, the, the poor, some of these people are bike more than the rich whites do. Um, and they have these maps of the entire six county region. Have you guys seen them? I know what you're talking about, but uh, you know, uh, uh, of course, and I, I think that's one of the beauties of our, our strategy here is simply to say, we want everyone to have access and we care about numbers and we care about children. And if you say you care about children, that means you care about communities of color. It always, and our, our you know, we wanna make sure that everyone has access, particularly communities of color, also means you're addressing poverty because, you know, again, you're, you're, you're trying to, it, it's, I think, a very, a very straightforward metric to say you simply wanna serve the maximum percentage of the population and you want to make sure particularly for uh you know uh white latinos uh uh other latinos black uh and and um and uh, other minority populations that they have better access over time and it's easy to measure that it's it's objectively measurable if if the if the measure is access not how many people are cycling because that's always a sort of a challenging question anyway right yeah
And so we have time for one more question. And we've got one here in the chat from uh, Machiej. Um, and they are uh, stating, they're, they're wondering, like, so much of the rhetoric around cycling infrastructure seems to be focused on the recreation aspect and not as part of a holistic transportation alternative or part of a multimodal solution. And they're wondering sort of why that is. It sounds like you're t you are taking more of that holistic approach, uh, trying to get folks that are uh, using it in that like sort of interested but concerned category. Um, but why do you think uh, a lot of the otherwise discussion is focused on that recreation aspect? Yeah, I mean, to be clear, that's the very, the point I'm trying to make is if we're trying to create a low stress network, that's my F, F, uh, interest here. The recreational network is a is a great place to start because it exists and it is low stress, right? The, no one will deny that they are less afraid of being hit by a car on the North Branch Trail in the middle of the North Branch Trail versus being on North Avenue, right? So um, it, the I, I very much believe and and do it myself that if you have uh, the system. Uh, a low stress system where you're never more than a mile and a half from something, you'll use it for utilitarian purposes. I mean, I don't necessarily want to bike on Devon Avenue or on North Avenue to get to Devon Avenue or North Avenue, right? And I think the, my, my, I think the point we're trying to make is simply pulling out a low stress network as an end in itself that lends itself to something that particularly interested but concerned populations can use, not just to recreate, but also to go places, right? Uh, and so I, I, and I, I think it's important to sort of distinguish that from the general fact that, of course, we want to make all infrastructure public way safer for cyclists and pedestrians and, for that matter, drivers by particularly making tactical improvements at major intersections. Uh, I, I mean, Cicero and Irving Park in Milwaukee, that should be safer than it is now. I mean, I only, given the number of cars going through there, I don't know how safe it can be, but it should be safer. I'm not trying to dispute that for one second, but I just, I'm just saying that, uh, you know, a lot of that infrastructure on Milwaukee or Archer only appeals to a fairly narrow segment of the total, uh, you know, of all residents in Cook County. Well, great. Thank you very much for being here and talking about the Cook County bicycle, uh, bicycle plan and all that you're doing to implement it. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. We really appreciate uh, your input uh, and getting, getting further details of what's currently going on. I appreciate everyone's comments. I mean, you know, this is part of our engagement strategy. I, again, I, I, I hope you see that we're trying to be upfront, honest, and clear about our strategies. Uh, we're trying to kick the tires and be, you know, I think that it's very helpful to, for anything you have to say. And, you know, if this is an active plan, we encourage you to go to our website, draw maps, tell us what you need to, you want to see done. Uh, we will pay attention. That's our purpose. And, and get, it, get your mother, get your son, get everyone involved, <laughs> not just white men of a certain age. That's, that's a bad look. You know that. <laughs> and thank you, Active Trans, for uh, having us. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Active Trans. <laughs> of course. Thank you, guys. We, we appreciate it. Um, and we're, we're looking forward to more tomorrow. So um, about the transit plan. So we'll, oh, that's we'll, right. Yeah, we'll put on that right away. Yeah. And we'll, we'll send out links to everyone. And yeah, everyone helps spread the word so we can get more data for accounting to make a really awesome plan. So thanks. Thanks, guys. everyone. Thank you, guys. Bye.